Hi everyone, my name is Gary Ang. I'm the founder of Number Skills Learning Center. Today I'll be going through a topic that begs a lot of SET1 students and that's called algebra. Okay, so we're going to talk about algebra uh, expressions and manipulations. So here we go. Okay, so algebraic manipulations and expressions, what are these things? Okay, so of course um, some people um, we have recall that we learned this in um, primary school. So it's everything to do with uh, X and Y and, and something like that. So, so of course I, I, I prepared this little picture here that shows you uh, what we, some part of uh, what we'll be doing. So, so like a little child's, um, little toddler's toy, right? You put the uh, triangle into the triangle slot, you put the square into the square slot. More or less, some part of it will be something like this because X, after all, represents a value. So once you know the value, you can put the value back into X. Right, so that's some stuff. So you, you put the right number into the right slots. So algebraic expressions are basically an expression that we use letters from the alphabet to represent. Okay? So something like 6x plus 3y minus 2z minus 8. So this is what we call an algebraic expressions. Right? Now of course in algebraic expressions there are also terms that we need to get used to. For example, this x, y, z, they are representing another number, usually what we call unknowns. However, these numbers are what we call variables, okay? So variables because they vary, they, they are not fixed at the moment, okay? Now, at the same time, this is a pretty long expression, right? Pretty long because there are like quite many components. This components part by part, we are, is what we call terms, okay? So these are what we call terms in the algebraic expression. And of course, uh, there are, there's a particular term that's quite special, right? Uh, that doesn't come with any algebraic letters. So, for example, like the negative 8 is what we call a constant term. So, because it doesn't change, it's constant, it's fixed. Now, then of course, uh, we do have numbers like 6 next to the x, positive 3 next to the y, and negative 2 next to the z. These are what we call the coefficients of x, y, z, um, respectively. So, first of all, we need to get in tune to all this... Um, uh, terms that the teachers will be using uh, to describe. So it, 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 to some students, the, they may not fully understand what the teacher is talking about when they say, hey, write down the coefficient of x, for example, and they go like, what well, is a coefficient, okay? So, so that is um, what uh, we, the, the so-called labeling of uh, algebraic expression is like, okay? Now, of course, we also must then understand that, uh, well, this means something. So in algebra, of course, uh, this, this does mean that it's three times of uh, A plus B. At the same time, we also must be able to understand the English equivalent. So for example, uh, the English uh, equivalent would be three times the sum of A plus B, uh, A and B. So it, it, in the algebra, it means this. Okay? Now you'd be surprised to know that before algebra was uh, so widely used in mathematics, the mathematical problems and therefore their solutions are very long. Okay, very long because they use really English terms like this and phrase like this to describe what they are doing. So it is very cumbersome and, and uh, uh, inefficient to, 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 to communicate to any, another person, hey, this is my answer to your problem of uh, how to divide uh, you know, the number of onions I have, that, that kind of stuff. So, so that was a long time ago. So of course, uh, in, in this day and age, right, we have algebra, and uh, that is obviously one of the reasons why it is so important in mathematics. Okay, come, let's take a look at some examples here. Okay? So example one, uh, it's actually quite simple, to be honest. Right? Uh, this is the beginner's guide to uh, algebra in set one, really. Okay? So write out an algebraic expression for each of the following. Right? So add uh, 3x to 4y, and divide the sum by z. So, so pretty obvious, you just follow the instructions, right? So you add 3x to 4y, which means you add them together. And this is the sum that they're talking about. Um, divide the sum by z. So there you go, divide by z. That's it. That's the algebraic expression of um, the English equivalent over there. Subtract x squared from 4 times the cube root of y. And all these are terms. Huh? So like I said, there, there are a few things. Number one, there's this term called the cube root of y, so q of y look a bit like this, uh, we're supposed to subtract x squared from 4 times this joker. So we, we need to times 4 first, and then we subtract x squared from this fella. Okay, so there you go. Right? If you read carefully, it's not that bad. Right? So uh, of course, 
Then we talk about uh, another type of uh, questions that um, usually pop out in um, SEC1 algebra, uh, which was uh, what the picture actually earlier on um, encompassed. Basically, evaluate literally means uh, find a value, right? It comes from the word value, as you can see, evaluate. Now, evaluate means this is a value that we're supposed to find. And of course, when A is negative 3, I shall use different color for this purpose so you can see a little bit more uh, clearly. So A is equal to minus 3, uh, B is equal to 4, and uh, C is equal to 2. So, so the, the whole idea is rather simple. Like I say, a toddler's toy kind of idea. So A is negative 3. So all you need to do is to put the negative 3 into every single A you see over there, right? And there you go. So that's the A equals to negative 3. Then of course, um, hold on, green color. Okay, here we go. Now B is equal to 4. So you put B inside here, and uh, B inside here, and, and, and B inside here. Uh, because that's B is equal to 4. Uh, and for C being equals to 2. Okay, hold on. Now C is equal to 2. So we put C equal to 2 right here. So at the end result, of course, all these arrows and you know different colors make it look quite messy. But that's the idea that we should have in our head. Of course, at the end of the day, well, the, the numerical equivalent looks a bit like this. All right. Uh, so this is what we call the numbers that we need to work out, which is the number that they're asking us to find, which is the evaluate part. Okay, so so all we need to do, of course, some of you may think that sure, maybe I just press calculator, and that is the legit move, really. Okay, so yes, you can just press your calculator exactly what you see here, and then uh, you will get the answer. However, I will not encourage that completely because ends up you don't really use your brain that much. You know I mean, I, like, I mean, come on, to be serious. Um, minus 3 plus 4. Do you really need calculator to do that? It's like 4 minus 3, right? So I, I wouldn't want my students to develop this habit of uh, everything you see you punch in calculator, including 1 plus 1, you also punch inside. You know what I mean? It, it becomes, it doesn't make you progress, okay? So, so what I urge students to try to do is to individually Work it out mentally. I mean, come on, to be honest, minus 3 squared is not difficult, it's just positive 9. Okay? Because minus 3 times minus 3 is positive. And, and uh, okay, this, this thing here that I was uh, talking about earlier on, right? The, the 4 minus 3, it's just 1. Okay, why do you need calculator to do that? Okay? Uh, and uh, 2 minus 4 minus 2, that's it. So, so numbers that you know, for example, 9 times 4, that's at the top. This is a 1 times minus 2. And uh, honestly speaking, nobody writes 1 times something. I mean, isn't it obvious, like, 1 times something is... That's something, right? So, so, so there you go. Uh, work out the number at the top, work out the number at the bottom, you get the answer. In fact, you can actually solve this without talking at all. Okay? Of course, if you just want to switch off your brain. Now, some people think that uh, using calculator is um, safer. No, it depends. It really depends. Okay, why I say that is because uh, the more you type in, the more likely you're going to type something wrong. Okay? And it, it unnecessary things you, you may have missed out one bracket and it may mean different thing altogether. Okay? So just watch out for that kind of uh, problem. We use calculator, yes, but we use it wisely. Okay, so example three is more or less the same thing as what we are talking about. Alright, uh, so so come, let, let's try it. Okay, so we have um, A is equal to 3, B is equal to 2, C is equal to minus 1. So all we need to do is to punch this number into the uh, correct spacing, right? So I'm not going to draw so many arrows anymore, otherwise it, it really looks quite messy. So working wise, it should be a bit like this. Okay, so 3 uh, minus 2, bracket up, square. Uh, and then minus away, uh, b minus the negative 1. Okay, you got to be careful with this double minus because in the earlier chapters, uh, you should have learned the basics of uh, negative numbers. So, so when you have uh, minus a negative, it becomes a positive, right? The main reason is, of course, um, of the multiplier effect. Okay, but of course, this chapter is not really talking about that anymore. So this is talking about, okay, how how we deal with algebra and uh, how how we can make sense of uh, what is going on okay and of course there are a lot more in fact we'll be learning your algebra from sec 1 which is now this is the basic the most basic the easiest uh, all the way to your sec 2 sec 2 is where you really have a lot and and that's when the foundation is built and when you go to sec 3 and 4 uh, that's when they're all using all these um, different rules and manipulation skills that uh, we pick up so this is the first step really guys Okay, anyway, <clears throat> so we put in the ABC, alright, uh, just make sure you 
well, you don't get callous. Like you put the wrong number in the wrong slots, it won't be correct. Like if you put a triangle into a square slot, it won't go in. All right, so okay, let me double check because I can be quite careless myself. Okay, I think I'm quite satisfied. So um, of course we should know that uh, we work out the, the number inside the bracket first. So in this case, it's just one. Okay, you, you should know the answer. Yeah, one squared, one times one. This is going to be a three because it's a two minus negative one, or equals two plus one. So it becomes a three squared. So it's a one minus nine, and that gives us a negative eight. Okay, here we go. All right, so. In a nutshell, introduction to what set one algebra looks like, that's the beginning only. Okay, the beginning only, there are a lot more uh, at the back, which uh, it'll be too long for uh, this short video. Okay, we'll come to the end of this video. So if there's any topic or questions in particular that you want us to go through in this manner, please comment below and uh, we'll see you soon.